Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program and I'm going to take you through the basic design of uh, planes in, in Kerbal Space Program. I'm going to go into the more advanced stuff later on in this video, but uh, to start off with I'm just going to go over the basics. So here's a basic plane, this has everything you need and I'm going to go through all the reasons why this is a pretty good plane. So first of all we've got a couple of fuel tanks which is more than enough for flying around Kerbin and we've got a basic jet engine because it's actually more efficient especially at lower altitudes and we don't need the extra power that a turbojet engine will provide. However if you're aiming to go high up into the atmosphere a turbojet engine is definitely better. So two, few, two fuel tanks is more than enough. Uh, we probably won't use any of you know anywhere near all of that. You could probably fly all the way to another continent easily with that. Uh, but you know it's a pretty good choice just to have a bit more than you actually need and you know you need somewhere to attach everything to anyway at the front you can see we've got a mark 1 cockpit that's a pretty good cockpit it's generally um, generally pretty good it's not too heavy and uh, it also you know provides quite a nice IVA view with lots of stuff in there and an easy way to see so it's uh, nice to fly from inside the cockpit wings wise we've got uh, delta wings because they're quite big they provide uh, quite a lot of lift without adding too much mass and that's that's generally pretty good for wings to do and then uh, behind them you can see we've got the standard control surfaces uh, we're using those ones because they're the sort of right size for these wings and we obviously need some control over the craft uh, you'll notice these do add quite a bit of lift as well they're you know pulling the center of lift far back and uh, yeah you always need to add these before you judge where your center of lift is but I'll talk about that a bit in a minute at the front we've got some winglets this is uh, to do two things pull our center of lift forward and also give us a bit more control over the craft it makes it a lot easier to take it off if you've got winglets at the front and uh, you know it just generally helps with controlling your craft however you don't want to add them if it pulls your center of lift in front of your center of mass because that's not good at the back here you can see we have a um, another winglet and that is to uh, uh, essentially act as a rudder. Uh, what a rudder will do is basically turn the plane like left and right without pitching around or tilting or anything uh, which is kind of useful and uh, you want to place the rudder as far back as you can because the further black back you place the rudder the um, the more control it will give you basically because it's further away from the center of mass so it has more leverage. Uh, leverage applies to that. Anyway, uh, you can also see we've got a couple of air intakes. Now if we used a Mark II cockpit, we could have put an air intake on the front, a RAM air intake, because those are pretty good for especially like high altitude flying. But for low altitudes, it doesn't matter as long as you've got an intake or two per engine. And you know, this, this kind of thing will be absolutely fine. Um, and we've got just two of the radial intakes because obviously that's the only type of intake we could fit on. So now, now for landing gear, we've got uh, three bits of landing gear. One at the front because that's generally the most stable and if you right click on it you can actually unlock the steering which means that it will give you a bit more control on the runway and uh, you know make it a bit easier to take off and land. And then at the back we've got two bits of landing gear. Now we could have put these in the middle somewhere but uh, generally if your wings are quite small you know the wider wheelbase is quite useful. Yeah, if you make a mistake like I just did hit Control Z it will actually undo which is kind of useful. Anyway, uh, I'll see you on the runway. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is turn on SAS. This does a really good job. Uh, now, the new versions of AS SAS sorry, um, are really good. They keep control of your ship, generally do a pretty good job at keeping it stable. And uh, yeah, now let's throttle up and uh, take off. So, obviously shift is throttle um, and you know the engine will slowly boost up to full thrust. It takes a while for these jet engines to do it. Because we've got so much lift you can see we've already taken off. We didn't even have to pitch up at all really. Which is uh, one of the advantages about building small planes. And you'll see this thing's actually really maneuverable. I'd be happy about this plane. It's wobbling a bit. It's not quite um, as stable as it could be. But it's pretty good. And it's not, you know, it's not unstable. If I pitch up like this it's not going to flip. Which is a really good thing. And I'll go a bit more about how you make it like that in a minute, uh, we're going to build another plane and I'm going to talk about some of the more in-depth things that we can do. But anyway, you'll see this, this kind of thing flies fairly nicely and it's a good sort of starting point if you want to build a basic plane, is to build something simple like this before you try any of the advanced things that I'm going to show you now. 
So we're back to a basic plane body here and I'm going to first of all click on the center of mass indicator thing to bring it up so we can see where the center of mass or the center of gravity as you may have heard of it uh, be referred to and that's that ball there and then we're also going to hit the center of lift and you'll see that goes to the bottom of the um, space plane hanger now that's because we don't have any wings or anything yet but we will see that do something in a minute Anyway, uh, the first thing we're going to do is add wings. Now, I would say, generally, if you can fit them on, the delta wings are going to be the best. If you've got a bigger plane, then you can actually use wing connectors and, you know, wings in front and then put delta wings behind and things like that. But uh, I'm going to go over the basic principles of, you know, placing wings and doing all the different things to do with that. So when you've got a couple of wings attached like this, I'm going to attach some uh, control surfaces to the back as well, obviously, so we have a bit more control. And uh, then... So there's a few things you can do with wings. First of all, you can tilt them up and down. Now, tilting them down, for, uh, for example, would give you a plane which is less stable, but more aggressive in flying, more maneuverable. Tilting them up does the opposite. It makes it a lot more stable. It self-corrects itself almost. Um, you know, if you're coming in on a glide with SAS turned off, it will automatically sort of get itself level with the horizon which is really useful if you want a plane that's just easy to fly, especially if you don't want to use SAS. Um, I wouldn't tilt it up much more than that though, otherwise you're just going to extremes and losing yourself on lift basically, because the more you angle it up, the less they're going to generate lift. But anyway, uh, so you know you can do that. I'm going to go with a few degrees of uh, tilt up, something like that, you can see, is uh, going to improve the stability a little bit. And the other things you can do with wings, for example, if you're having trouble taking off, is tilting them this way. So tilting them this way will actually make it a bit easier to take off. The plane, even while it's flying horizontally, will lift itself up, which is kind of useful. Again, it makes it a bit easier to fly, but I'm not going to worry about that because I generally don't think this plane will need it. However, if you've got a bigger plane, something that is just having trouble taking off or you know generating height, you may want to do that because it will actually help you quite a lot. Obviously you can do the opposite, but there's not really ever a situation where you'd want to do that. So I'm not going to worry about that. It obviously just does the opposite thing. So now we're going to talk a bit about um, wheel placement because that is quite an important thing. In fact, uh, before we do that, let's talk about uh, other sort of control surfaces that you may want to add. So I'd say you'll probably always, unless your center of lift is really close to your center of mass already, you're probably going to want to put on a couple of winglets at the front because that's, as I said, going to give you a bit of control and, um, you know, make it a bit easier to take off, things like that, and also pull the center of lift forward a little bit. Now, I'll talk a bit now about where the center of lift and center of mass really want to be. Ideally, you want your center of lift to be just behind your center of mass at all times. You can also test that when you've run out of fuel, your center of lift and center of mass will still be reasonably well aligned. However, I already sort of knew they would be because the center of mass is only going to move by, you know, where the fuel is. And this is already pretty much in the middle of both the tanks, so it shouldn't be too big a deal. But you may want to try moving fuel about a bit to make sure that you are still going to end up with a stable plane because if the center of lift goes in front of the center of mass, you're going to have a trouble fly a bit of trouble flying your plane. It's going to try and flip round on you and it's not going to go well. Center of uh, lift almost acts like center of drag at the moment in Kerbal Space Program because of the way drag is modeled. So if your center of lift is in front of your center of mass, your plane's going to want to flip round so that the center of lift is behind your center of mass because that's the sort of way it would always like to fly essentially. So you want also don't want to go too far back because if you go too far back you'll have trouble taking off and uh, your plane just you know will be sort of sluggish and slow to turn and it won't be very maneuverable. For the best balance I'd recommend something around this. So it's going to be easy to control even when you've run out of fuel or fuels you know in, in a way which doesn't help you. For example if I'd run out in the first tank I've still got a bit of leeway there which is good um, and it you know still provides a good amount of maneuverability. So, now that we've talked a bit about uh, center of lift and center of mass, let's look at uh, landing gear placement. So, landing gear placement is a bit more important than you'd think. Let's have a look. We can place it in a few places, as I said. You're always probably going to want to have one at the front at least, maybe two if, you, you know, if you've got a bigger plane, but I'm going to go with one for any, pretty much any small plane that I have. 
and that's generally going to be good. Just attach to the bottom of your command pod is usually a good idea. And then you're going to want to actually have a look at your rear wheels. So there's a few ways that you can place these. You can put them on the end of your wings, but if your wings are tilted up, that may not be such a good idea because your engine is going to be dangerously close to the floor. So you can always just put them, like either attach them to your wings, maybe not at the end, or you can attach them uh, to your ship like so. And uh, you do that, you can rotate them with Q and E until you get them at the kind of angle you want. I wouldn't angle them too much because then your plane can become unstable. You want them to be um, as close to vertical as possible, maybe a little bit outwards like that. Anyway, um, your, the other thing you need to take into account is make sure your center of lift is in front of where your rear wheels are because your rear wheels are almost the pivot point when you take off. And if your center of lift is behind them, then you're going to be trying to pivot up this way rather than up in front of the uh, wheels. You're going to be trying to pivot to this way around your rear wheels rather than this way. There you go. That was a good way of showing it which doesn't work too well. So basically you always want to have your rear wheels, the bit that's going to be pivot, you're going to pivot on as you try and take off, you want that to be behind your center of lift. But usually that will end up being behind without having to really think about it. So the last thing we're going to really go into detail on is the uh, center of mass and your rear rudder. Because you are going to want to have a rear rudder, you can also put a couple of them on, you know, attach them to the ends of your wings, things like that, depending on uh, how much control you think you need. But uh, usually for small planes, you're only going to want to have one and it's going to want to be in the middle. You always want to balance out where they are. You wouldn't want to have one on one wing and nothing on the other. That would be a bit weird and it probably wouldn't fly too well. Anyway, um, you want to put it pretty much as far back as you can. The further back you put it, the more leverage it has and the more control you'll get, basically. The more torque it's going to be able to generate effectively. Um, so that's, that's generally always what you're going to want to do. So the last thing I'm going to talk about before we take this one out to the runway is um, basically your air intakes. So they're in your aerodynamic tab. And yeah, there's a couple of different types, obviously. If you've got space to put a ram air intake or a circular intake on, I'd always recommend doing that. Ram air intakes are generally better than circular intakes, but circular intakes do look a little bit nicer, I think. But for our plane, we're just going to use the radial intakes for, you know, low altitudes, it doesn't really matter. However, at high altitudes, like in SSTOs, these aren't going to be quite as good as a ram air intake. Anyway, I would generally suggest putting one on if you're going to be at really low altitudes, or two if you're going to try and go a few thousand meters up. And uh, yeah, that should be pretty good, so let's take this out to the runway. So, here we are, and uh, you can see already that the plane is angled nicely to take off. So, we're going to go and uh, hit space. The other thing I'd like to mention is the height of your rear wheels. You want them to be lower than your front wheel so that your plane does tilt up like this. And then if your plane's light enough and has enough lift, it will actually just take off like that. I don't even have to point it in the right direction. So the other thing I'd like to show you once I've put my gears in is if I turn off SAS now and then tilt the plane, you'll see that uh, very gently, it is very, very gently because I've not angled the wings very much, but it is going to very, very gently sort of self-correct itself, um, you know, tilt-wise, like this way. So it, it's going to want to stay horizontal because of the way that I've angled those wings. And you'll see it's doing that. There. No SAS. It only does it to a certain point because I've not angled the wings too much. But it does do it. And it is noticeable. It makes the planes a little bit easier to land. And, you know, if you're not that good at flying planes, that might be something that helps you. Anyway, the other thing you'll notice is how responsive this plane is. In fact, it is possible to spin it out because it's very, very, um, you know, very, very, I guess responsive is the right word, maneuverable. Um, you, you know, if you try really hard, you probably could spin this out if you sort of pitch around a bit crazily. But even then, it self-rights itself quite well because the center of lift is behind the center of mass. So this is me trying my hardest to try and spin it out. And even once I have, it's really, really, really easy to gain control of it again. Even if I turn off SAS, you'll see it probably will point itself in the right direction anyway eventually. Yep, that was no control input at all, and it's already pointing itself pretty much in the right direction. So that's how you build a really nice, stable, easy-to-fly plane. There's a lot of other factors in there. You can change things. Feel free to obviously tinker about with your planes, see how you can get them to perform. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.